Hey guys, Coach Mike here with your weekly workout. For today's workout, we're trying something a little bit new. So what we're gonna do is three circuits. We're going to do uh, three circuits, four minutes of work, one minute of rest at each station. And we're gonna pair two movements together. I'm going to get into those movements later on after our warm-up. For equipment that you'll need, you'll need a kettlebell, a valve slide potentially, and a super band or something to row with. So you can obviously use a kettlebell or a book bag. First exercise in our warm up is going to be baby breathing. So we're gonna be on our backs and then feet are gonna be up, knees wide and hands go between the knees onto the shins, ankles or feet. And then we're just hanging out here. So we're breathing in and out of the nose, tongue against the roof of your mouth. If that doesn't feel good, we can always go feet to the floor with hands on the abdomen. Again, with breathing, it's finding a position that allows you to get the best breath possible. That's our first move in the warm up. Second exercise is going to be our half kneeling hip flexor stretch. So we're gonna go one knee up, one knee down. If you can dig in the, do in the toes, great. What I want you to think about doing is kicking the ground down, keeping the butt squeezed, and then pushing the knee down with the hands and then we're gonna push the hip forwards and come back to the top. Now, one of the cues I've been using is also pretend like you have dirt on the bottom of your front foot. And then, to pull, then I want you to pull yourself into the movement by thinking about dragging the front foot backwards. So push through the ground, keep your butt squeezed, push the hands, and then drag the front foot backwards and you'll get even more stretch there. Three to five reps on each side is perfect. And if it doesn't feel okay on the toes, you can still point the toes and push the knee through the ground to keep your butt squeezed. The third exercise in our warm up is going to be a halo or a press out. We're gonna go one knee up, one knee down with the front foot, march it in towards center till you feel off balance, and then march the foot out till you feel confident. We can put the mini band around the wrists and press it away. We can pull apart a towel or we can go halo around the head. The goal is to keep your balance and to keep the front foot light. So as you go through your halo or your press out, don't reach forward, keep the front foot light, and then make sure that it stays that way as you go around. So feel the, the heaviness on the down knee and keep it that way throughout the movement. Three to five reps on each side is perfect. The fourth move in our warm up is a side plank, and that's one of our exercises today in the strength section. So one of the best ways to do a side plank is start almost in a side plank on the floor. You're gonna push the ground down with the elbow and then to get into the side plank, don't think about bridging the hips up, think about pushing the knees down and into the floor. So hand can go on the hips, push the knees down and into the floor to extend the hips. And then from here, we've been having a lot of fun raising the top leg. And what I want you to do here, continue to drive through the ground but see how you can't see my foot. You don't wanna have the leg like this. Try to keep the shin parallel to the floor and you're gonna get a bunch of burn on that upside glute. Three to five breaths is cool. Rest and switch sides. The fifth move in our warm up is the chop and pop. So we're gonna find a hip width stance. And one of the things I want people to focus on, chop and pop or kettlebell swing or sandbag clean is later on in the workout. I want you to focus on finding the quads and butt at the top. So for the chop and pop, hands start out in front. You're gonna swipe the hands back. And then from here, push through the floor and lock out. So the thing I was talking about with one of our classes recently is make sure when you do the chop and pop, if you don't push through the floor, the hips tend to come through and we lean back and get a little bit of sway in our low back. If we push through the ground, you can see I do not have the same sway. So you're gonna swipe back, push through the ground to find that hard lockout. And that's the feeling that's going to help drive the kettlebell or help you propel the sandbag in the clean or swing. Last move in your warm up is a back lunge. So finding that uh, heavy front foot, we're gonna lunge back. And then one of the strength movements in our workout is the valve slide back lunge. So again, pretend your front foot is dirty and you're trying to scrape the dirt off the bottom of your foot. So you're gonna lunge back and then pull yourself forward. Lunge back and then pull yourself forwards. So try to find that action of pulling the front foot backwards 
It's going to help you find more posterior chain, so more glute and hamstring. Uh, and it's going to be a great lower body movement to get you ready for the, uh, the workout ahead. So now that we finished the warm up, first exercise in our strength routine is the goblet squat. So we're going to grab our kettlebell. We're going to pop it up. And then from here, I want you to still find that belt buckle up feeling. So find your stance and then maybe get a little slack in the knees, but turn the belt buckle up and then keep that feeling as you squat down and come back up. If we hyperextend at the top, there's musculature from the spine and the lower core into the hips. And if we hyperextend a little bit, we put tension on that system and it limits our ability to get deep into the squat. So pop the bell up, or if we're using a press out, any of that stuff, try to find the belt buckle up feeling and then keep that feeling as you press out, keep that feeling as you goblet squat, any of that stuff will do. It's a great practice when you're starting to learn to squat. The second move in that set is your side plank. So again, to find the right points of performance for this, we're gonna push the ground down. So we don't wanna shrug the shoulder towards the ear, push the floor away, and then drive the knees down and into the sand with the top leg. If you can keep the tension through the floor, you're gonna raise it up and then keep the shin parallel to the ground. If you're looking for some other upper body uh, tension, you can use a mini band around the forearm and pull it across the chest or hold like a sandbag. Either way, when you do that, make sure we're still keeping all the other things and then don't let the elbow flare, keep the elbow tight to the body and push it down. That's your side plank as the second movement in the first rotation of our workout. Second circuit is going to be our valve slide back lunge or kickstand deadlift and then a bent over row. So again, like we talked about in the warm up with the valve slide back lunge, you want to use the tension through the front foot to pull you up to the top as opposed to trying to push off the back foot like you can in a regular back lunge. So we're going to be here, heavy front foot slide back, and then you have dirt on your front foot, pull yourself forward. So try to drag the foot to get the dirt off your foot, and that's gonna drag you back up to the top, as opposed to watch my back foot. If you see people try to use the back foot, they slide out and then they're able to push themselves up. So try to get that tension through the front foot to pull you up to the top. If that doesn't feel good for the toes, we can go kickstand deadlift. So one foot's out in front, Toes are uh, heels off the floor on the back foot, and then we can go into a hinge position. So our hips are going to travel back. I'm not going hips down like a squat. I'm going hips back like a deadlift, and that's going to help us feel more hamstring and glute, especially on the front foot side. So that's your first exercise in the second circuit. The second exercise in the second circuit is a bent over row. So we have a kettlebell option or a band option. For the kettlebell option, you're going to hold it upside down like you're doing a halo. You're going to then hold it upside down facing the floor. And then from here, we're going to think deadlift. So again, hips go back. You're going to pull the handle apart to engage the back and then row the bell to your belly button and extend the arms back down. So make sure that you don't feel low back on this. Make sure the core feels engaged. Pull the handle apart and row. Your other option is with the super band. Hold it in your hands like this, step into the middle of it, and then stand up. So from here, now we can do a bent over row on both sides. We're going to hinge back again, just like the, we did with the kettlebell, and then row up and come back down. And the thing you want to pay attention to is only row as far as you can pull. Sometimes we try to think of the range of motion, and we get big rows like that, but a lot of the times what you'll see on that is as people get too far into it, the shoulder rounds forward. So only pull as far as you can pull. Don't think about the range of motion. Keep everything engaged and only pull as far as you can pull. I know it sounds stupid, but you will feel the difference. The last two exercises in our uh, third circuit is a swing, clean, or chop and pop, and then a plank. So with the swing, clean, or chop and pop, again, Reinforce that feeling of quads and butt at the top. So whether we are sandbag cleaning or we are kettlebell swinging, make sure the tension goes through the ground and you find big quads and big butt squeeze at the top. If you don't do that, we tend to lean back, especially sometimes in the sandbag clean, 
you get the bag on the fist and then the bag makes you lean back. So by pushing through the ground, we're gonna keep the core engaged and we're gonna be in a stronger position at the top. Find that in your uh, swing or even the chop and pop, don't lean back, push the floor away. And as promised, the last exercise in this circuit is a plank. So hard style plank down on the elbows. We're gonna be here, toes are dug in. First thing you're gonna do is push the ground away with the elbows. Second thing, hips up. From here, tuck the tailbone to find that lower core feeling and then drive through the heels to find a total plank. Maybe five breaths here, rest the knees, rest the hips, shake it out and go again. This is paired with the swing or clean for that exact reason I just mentioned. We wanna make sure that we're finding the lower core quads and butt, we can reinforce it in the plank and then bring it to our swing in the first exercise. So I would try to flip back and forward uh, between those two movements in this circuit. Again, for the timing for these circuits, you're going to do four minutes of work and one minute of rest at each station, trying to go between each move at your own pace. After that, you're going to do some kind of carry between three and five minutes and then a finisher if you still have some energy left. Thanks for joining me for this workout, guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please reach out and we'll see you next time.